I'm a self-taught programmer and I want to talk to you about where I started and the things that I've done over the years and a couple of things which I'm quite proud of which I've programmed myself just from researching online and just teaching myself and I just want to show you a little bit about those and just quickly show you what I started out doing all these years ago back in I was born in 75 I'm 48 years old just turned 48 years old and back in the day we had a ZX81 I must have been around eight or nine years old had a 1k memory you could have this optional 16k RAM pack the next computer we had as a family was an Oric one and this is the one that really got us into learning how to program I don't remember having a ZX microdrive as we've got just here I definitely remember having one of those joysticks exactly the same joystick as that one and then after the ZX Spectrum we had a Commodore 64 now I remember back in the day there was a kid that used to copy the games you'd take a blank cassette and the original cassette put them in what we used to call a ghetto blaster press play on the original record on the blank one and it would copy the game now I had nothing to do with this lad because obviously not what you're supposed to do but he used to charge a pound apparently then at some point I remember we had a computer called a QL I don't know if it was our computer at the time my uncle brought one round or my dad brought one maybe second hand and I remember he coming round and there were problems with this microdrive and then after the QL this is where things really started to change for me in terms of graphics power because the games were loads better on the Commodore Amiga I had a Commodore Amiga 500 Plus which I think had a 1 megabyte memory. We loaded games in via floppy disk rather than tape and that was the last computer that I kept for probably two or three years. Sometime shortly after that period I ended up getting a PC and going to university and that was my first ever PC. I remember it was a Pentium 200 with MMX was the processor and ever since then the world has been PCs or Macs and that was the end of the era of the non-PC home computers for myself. Anyway, after going to university to study mechanical engineering and electronics, I ended up accidentally getting drawn into the point of sale trade, which was completely unrelated. And years went by, many years went by, we were paying a yearly license fee of over a thousand pounds to use this shopping cart if we just wanted a small feature adding it was going to be something like half a day's work minimum and we were end we were paying sort of four to five hundred pounds and so i decided if i could just learn how to program html and css and i started to get into javascript i realized that if i could understand that well enough we could make our own shopping cart and I would be able to control everything that was going on and we wouldn't have to pay this yearly fee. That's what I ended up doing and this is the result. I haven't really updated this for many years now. We've got the main menu which just opens by sliding downwards. I remember this was really tricky to get working. The mini basket, I wanted it to open up when you hover over it but then also I wanted it to slide within after it's open. So it opens there and then you can see the content slide upwards one of the other things which I've already made a tutorial on is this fully functional sliding banner um, I won't say anything more on that because I've made a whole tutorial about it so this is where it started to get more complicated for me because I needed a way of storing the customers information in a database and that's where I stumbled across back-end programming I ended up choosing PHP and MySQL mainly because PHP was really popular and as you can see people can enter their information they can log in and log out and come back and view their order history I also learned about Ajax which is a way of updating part of the page without reloading the whole page so for example if I go into the product details page we can see that we've got information in the table about that particular product if you look at the table now the product details table as I click on A4 you'll see that it flashes and that information updates and that's working via Ajax so when you select a different item within the drop down what happens is 
Ajax from the JavaScript on the client side communicates to the server side and the PHP scripts run on the server side and then the client side updates the page using the information that's been returned from the server side and that's Ajax. And so the question about can a self-taught programmer become good enough and learn enough and understand enough to be able to make something like a shopping cart, like I've done, or a flight simulator, something else which I've done, obviously the answer is yes. I've not done anything that other people can't do. 99% of what I know now, I've learned just by going online and doing research and experimenting and just being completely engrossed and enthusiastic about the hobby of programming. It's that intense enthusiasm and the effort is no effort at that point because you like it so much, hopefully you like it so much, but if you're so enthusiastic about wanting to accomplish a task, you will just stick at it. Find, make it interesting for yourself. Setting yourself a challenge like I've done is the best way that I've found to make the whole process feel effortless. The other thing that I've done, which I'm quite proud of, is this RC simulator. I fly model helicopters as a hobby, and there are lots of professional simulators that you can buy online, but I wanted to learn computer graphics, and I thought, well, why not make a 3D simulator, just like the ones that you can buy, as my own personal challenge, as a way of learning, I was aware of Direct3D, but I ended up choosing OpenGL just because I like the idea that OpenGL is cross-platform. So I ended up getting into OpenGL as a way of learning 3D computer graphics. This is the result, it's my flight simulator. I haven't got it quite ready for release, but I did get VR working. So this is the VR headset that I use. It's a an HP 1440 pixel headset. It's a good quality headset. I really quite like using this. And it is Windows Mixed Reality. So because I've got the HP goggles rather than the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, it meant that I needed to use Windows Mixed Reality. So I got into understanding what was involved with Windows Mixed Reality and what I needed to do to get VR programmed into my simulator. This is where I've recorded my own flights. So I've made the simulator, I've recorded my own flights. We've got all of these helicopters that are going to perform different moves. I'm selecting each helicopter one at a time, assigning it the move that I've already flown. And now you can see them all flying around the screen doing the particular move in question. The way that I did this was go into the vertex shader of OpenGL and just manipulate the position of the vertices as they get fed in through the input attributes in the vertex shader. I've also got this example which just shows you a particle generator. So there's a little routine on the CPU side which controls the position of thousands of particles. This is something that I found really difficult to understand when I first started to get into it because you've got three servos that are moving and as the three arms move up and down, you need to work out the rotation of the swash. And there's a lot of fairly complicated trigonometry that goes into that. A big challenge that was for me. I even worked out that if you get a good grip on what's going on with this, you can move the servos way away from the swash plate and still have it moving and it looks really weird when you do that. I think I'm gonna do it now. There we go, so the servo is moving away. Now when I work the sticks, you'll see that everything still works the same. So what's been my strategy for learning how to program over the years? Well, I started off learning Python. I'll just show you the book. This is the first book that I ever used to get properly into programming by Michael Dawson. Python programming third edition for the absolute beginner. That was the first time I really got into modern programming and that would take me back, I can't remember, but I, it was around about the same time that just after the Python language, I learned C++, I started to get into learning C++. That is also by the same author, Michael Dawson. 
Both of those books I would highly recommend, even though they are quite old. This goes back to around about 2010, when I was using Microsoft's Visual Studio Express 2010, I think it was. They're the only two books that I have worked through to be able to then go online, expand what I needed to learn. Obviously, I've learned a lot of OpenGL from resources online, but it's all been done self-taught online. And the web development, I haven't done that from any books. All of the web stuff that I've learned that I needed to do the shopping cart, all of that is online. I use MDM Web Docs is my favorite resource and loads of other websites, W3 schools and just every website that you can think of that you'll get come up on Google when you're just searching for things that you need to understand. Working completely on my own, no help from anyone else at all. Since I've started to make tutorials, I've realized that there's a substantial amount within any one area that I don't know about or didn't know about until I've made the tutorial. So I've only needed to learn the particular things that I need to understand to get the job done. The advantage is you get to do a whole load of things and see them all working together, which is obviously a really big deal because you end up with a finished product which can be used and you've gone through the whole integration process of seeing how everything works together. You're just going to learn so much by doing that and that's what I've done. One of my insecurities is that if I get talking to other people online and they've got a formal education at university for programming and I'm just a hobbyist or a self-taught programmer, then what will they think of me? Am I just a fraud? Am I not worthy of an opinion? All those kinds of things. And these are just personal things that I genuinely do feel when I look around online and read different posts and things. Um, I try to reassure myself that you shouldn't be feeling that way because I know that I've done a couple of good things that are relatively complicated to do and hard work. But I, I still do feel that way, I genuinely do. And when I started to do a bit of research about this particular question to make this tutorial, I come across some answers on the page that I'm going to show you now. I obviously don't want to bang on about this answer that's got 2.4 thousand upvotes because if I use that language on the video, people are going to think <clears throat> it's out of order. But even so, I'm just going to highlight it um, because it tickled me when I read it. And the question is, do CS graduates hate self-taught programmers? And the most upvoted answer is this one just here. So it seems to me that the overwhelming majority of genuinely enthusiastic, professionally educated programmers, when they get asked their opinion of self-taught programmers that are also genuinely enthusiastic about programming, that seems to be the common trait, the fact that they are genuinely enthusiastic. The formal education is just one way of getting into it. The self-taught programming is just another way of getting into it. But the thing that is common to the people that seem to be, for me, the same kind of people is just the intense enthusiasm, the genuineness of the person to want to be a programmer. That's the thing that matters. And so it really doesn't matter if you're a self-taught programmer or whether you've got a formal university or college education. I'm absolutely convinced that that is the case now I've done my research. And so I will end it here. And just to say that if you're a self-taught programmer or you're thinking of becoming a self-taught programmer, then just go for it.